How to find, analyze, and buy investment real estate. This is the ultimate guide. In this video, we will cover how to find a real estate investment, how to analyze that investment once it's found, and we'll go over the basic steps in the buying process for your first real estate purchase. When it comes to investment properties, there are many different types of investments you can choose from. But how do you know which one is right for you? Here are a few things to consider when determining the kind of investment property you want to buy. First up, it's location. It's one of the most important factors to consider when choosing an investment property. One should try to invest in a property that is in a desirable neighborhood with good schools, parks, and other amenities nearby. Number two, type of property. Do you want to buy a single family home, a multi-family home? A condo? Each type of property has its own set of pros and cons, so it's important to do your research before making a decision and choose the one you think you can handle based on your free time allotment and experience level. Number three, rental income potential. How much rent can you realistically expect to charge for a property you are hoping to buy? This will vary depending on location, uh, the neighborhood, the type of property, and the amenities offered, and more. Other factors to consider when choosing an investment property is how much it's going to cost you now, but also in the future. How much will it cost to keep the property in good condition? Does it need any immediate repairs? Compare that estimation to your budget and search accordingly. So now that you know what kind of property you want, let's talk about where to find it. If you know a specific area you want to buy into, the first thing to do is to drive around that neighborhood. Look for properties that aren't being marketed as investments, but may have owners that are willing to sell. This can be especially effective if you know the area well. Keep an eye out for boarded up homes, overgrown yards, and other signs of neglected properties. Uh, many wholesalers have had a lot of success just walking up and knocking on the door and seeing if an owner of a property you're interested in is there to talk to. They may be in over their heads with the property and they need a way out, so they may be willing to strike up a real estate deal with you. And here's also what to do if you're feeling especially sneaky. Go and talk to the neighbors of a property you want if you're having a hard time getting a hold of the owner. Very often the neighbors are willing to help a potential new owner because if the property in question is a bit of an eyesore in the neighborhood and they know that you will be willing to potentially fix it up, they may give you information or at least give you direction on how to get in contact with that owner. As you're watching this on YouTube, you are likely rather savvy with the internet. Uh, so it's a really great avenue to pursue when you're looking for investment properties. There are plenty of real estate investor websites online with thousands of property listings. Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, even your local real estate sales companies often have interactive and responsive websites that you can utilize to search for properties. And of course, Mashpfizer, to use as an example, has a rental property finder, and you can search for top performing investment properties for both traditional and Airbnb properties that are for sale in any city or neighborhood across the country that best match your criteria. And it comes with real estate analytics that includes your estimated potential costs. Look for ads in newspapers. Look in the classified section of your local paper under homes for sale or properties for sale. And you will see ads for all kinds of real estate properties, usually divided into type. So houses, apartments, and condos. Most of the time, the properties there are from the owner directly for sale by owners, but you can find property listings by real estate agents as well. And I know this because my old broker from my sales days back in the day used to rent out, still does rent out the front page section of our local paper and they publicize listings and their agents. So um, as techy as we think we are in 2022, the paper is still a rather viable option for investors. And next, let's talk about working with real estate agents. There are many benefits to working with a real estate agent when you're looking for an investment property. Agents are experts at finding and negotiating the purchase of properties, and they can save you a lot of time and money and frustration, especially if you are new to the business. They have direct access to the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service, and they can use their knowledge and skills to help you find investment properties that fit your criteria and buy them for the best price that's possible. Also, here's a pro tip. Through the MLS, agents can set you up auto emails where they set up the criteria you're looking for in an investment property using things like 
like price and geographical parameters and other specific qualifications, how many beds and bathrooms, those kinds of things. And the MLS will send you all of the properties currently for sale on the market right now that fits those wants. But you will also get emailed in real time when a property is listed to the MLS that you may like and may fit your wants. So again, it's great for those just cracking into a market. So you found the property you are looking for. Do not jump on it immediately. Do not put in an offer right away, no matter what your instincts may tell you. <laughs> it's imperative that you analyze the numbers to make sure it's a good buy and it will begin generating a profit for you in a time span that you are comfortable with and hoping for. So here are some steps in analyzing your potential real estate investments. Start with looking at the market as a whole. How is the population growth in the area? What is the economic growth as that is important if you want to attract stable paying renters. No one wants to live, of course, in a dying city. So does it have a growing job market? What about the price to rent ratio? Or what about insurance costs and property taxes on average? Are they presently what you can afford? If you've determined that you're looking in a profitable market, the next stage in your analysis is to reduce your hunt to a micro level and make sure that the neighborhood of a potential buy meets your personal goals and standards. Some characteristics to consider are low crime rate, high employment rates. Uh, what is the percent of owner-occupied homes? Owner-occupied neighborhoods are notoriously nicer and better kept than renter-only areas. Does it have a good school district? What is its walkability? Does it have favorable local laws? Of course, MashVisor does all of this for us and it actually has a heat map tool where you can see the viability of an area and compare it with other locations. The final stage in an investment property analysis is to analyze the rental property itself. And here are some things that you should look for. Cash flow is the net amount of money that comes and goes out of a rental property. It's the difference between the total amount of money collected from rent and other sources and the total amount of money spent on operating expenses. Positive cash flow means that more money is coming in than going out, while negative cash flow indicates that there's more money being spent than being generated. Net operating income, or NOI. NOI is a measure of the income generated by a property after operational expenses are deducted. The formula is rental income plus other income minus operational expenses. And cap rate is the uh, possible rate of return on an investment property if it's bought in cash. It's computed by dividing the property's net operating income, or NOI, by the purchase price or market value. Because the manner of financing is not considered, it is typically used to compare many similar investment homes for sale in a specific location. Although what constitutes a reasonable cap rate varies depending on criteria such as area and property type, while a low cap rate is thought to be a safe investment, many real estate investors strive for a high cap rate, typically between 7 to 12 percent. And just keep in mind, MeshVisor has an investment property analysis calculator to make calculating and understanding these numbers easier. Uh, spreadsheets are great, but they're also prone to mistakes and MeshVisor makes the process a lot easier. How to buy real estate investments. The first step to buying a real estate investment property is, of course, do your own research and find a property that meets your investment criteria as we have previously discussed earlier in this video. As always, a real estate agent will make the finding of a property so much easier, especially if you are a new buyer and working your way through the steps independently. The next step is to get your financing in order before you put in an offer. Once you've found a potential property, consider how you're going to pay for it. If you're using cash, it makes the transaction a lot quicker and faster and less complex. If you are financing the property, you should get pre-qualified. Pre-qualifying for a real estate investment property is the process of a lender determining whether or not a particular property is a good fit for your investment goals and criteria. They do this by taking a close look at your financial situation, your credit history, your current employment, your bills, and the property itself. 
When approved, the lender will provide you with a letter of pre-approval or a loan estimate that outlines the terms of the loan. Then you use this information to make an offer on the property. If your offer is accepted, then move forward with the loan process. You will actually apply for the loan and the bank will officially approve the mortgage at a later time. Number three, make an offer on the property. After you have done your research and you found a property that meets your criteria and you have handled the financial component, the next step is to make an offer on the property. And this is important because uh, you need to negotiate a purchase price that's both fair to you and the seller. So here are some tips on making that offer. As mentioned, if you are paying cash for a property, your offer will be stronger than if you are financing the purchase. That's not possible for everyone, but if it is for you, certainly something to consider. Make sure your offer is realistic. The seller will likely counter your offer. So make sure that you left yourself some room in your offer to negotiate further. Don't give them your highest and best right off the bat. Give yourself a little wiggle room. Include any needed contingencies in your offer, meaning any stipulations on closing dates. If you're going to do a home inspection or what you wish to stay or be removed from the property. But do keep in mind the more contingencies, the more pushback you may receive from the seller. And number four, negotiate the contract. After you have made an offer, the next step is to negotiate the contract and close on the property. When negotiating the contract, here are a few things to keep in mind. The purchase price is not the only thing that can be negotiated, but you can also negotiate who pays for things like closing costs, home repairs found from the home inspection, and other expenses. Number two, try and keep your emotions out of the process. It's very important to remember that the negotiation is just a step in a business transaction. Uh, remembering this can help you make rational decisions and avoid making impulsive moves that could end up costing you money. And I used to do this. I struggled. I used to take negotiations very personally. When I was helping a client make a fair offer and I used math to justify our numbers and the seller rejected us or came back rather aggressively, I used to get kind of salty. <laughs> but that doesn't help anyone, so just keep it in mind. And number three, focus on finding a fair agreement. The goal of a negotiation is to find an agreement that's fair to both parties. This means you should try to find middle ground and avoid anything that would leave either party feeling like they got the short end of the real estate stick. No one wants that. And number four, be prepared to walk away. Sometimes the best thing you can do in a negotiation is to conclude it early. If you're not getting what you want and the other party isn't budging, it may be better just to end the negotiation altogether and look at another property. A property is just a property. It's nothing more. And there's always more real estate to buy. That's why we love it. And finally, it is time to close that deal. The process of closing a real estate sale can vary slightly from one transaction to the next, but there are some common steps that usually need to be taken in order to bring the sale to a successful end. Both the buyer and seller will sign a contract that outlines the terms of the sale, and then a deposit will be made by the buyer to solidify the deal. From there, a closing date will be set and the necessary paperwork will be prepared in order to transfer ownership of the property. On the day of closing, both parties will sign the final documents and the buyer will pay the remaining balance of the purchase price. Once everything is complete, the keys to the property will be handed over to the new owner. A closing can be done in person or remotely, but in most cases it is done in person at the county courthouse, a lawyer's office, or even the involved title company's headquarters. So let's wrap up. In this video, we discussed how to find a real estate investment, how to analyze that investment once it's found, and we went over the basic steps in the buying process for your first real estate purchase. I hope this was very helpful, and please keep us updated on your first real estate deal. And if you're buying an Airbnb, I do like free stays and free trips. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> Thank you, as always, to MashVisor for sponsoring today's video. At MashVisor, we help beginner and seasoned investors find the best areas for investing in both traditional and short-term rental properties. And of course, all listings come with analysis to help you make the best choice for your business. So check it out. It's mashvisor.com and you can get a free seven day trial by using the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael. Follow me on Instagram. It's Michael Talks Real Estate. And I will see you very soon.